This is not a normal episode or interview of the Seven Figure Squad. As an eight year combat veteran of the United States Marine Corps, I felt led to allow my fellow Afghani friend who was a former interpreter during Operation Enduring Freedom and whose identity will remain hidden during the duration of this interview to tell the truth about what really is going on in Afghanistan. He will share mostly about what the mainstream media will not tell you or reveal. In this short interview, Mr. A will reveal the truth behind this week's events in Afghanistan and how he, his family, and fellow Afghani countrymen truly feel about the United States of America. If you want to be better informed and find out some way how to help, stay tuned. The likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. What we're watching right now in Afghanistan is what happens when America withdraws from the world. So everybody who has been saying America needs to withdraw, America needs to retreat, we are getting a devastating, catastrophic, real-time lesson in what that means. Though I know that you are concerned about the present and future, I assure you that as your president, my focus is on preventing further instability, violence and displacement of my people. We cannot do anything. We cannot do anything. <laughs> so, I'm not working for anyone. I'm just a local. That's what my opinion is, working with directly with troops. The Taliban are saying that they're honoring and they're forgiving. That's not true. My brother, he's, he's a captain in army, Afghanistan army, where his commander ordered him to hand the guns and weapons to the hands of Taliban. So they took them out, they hanged them, four of them in Kandahar. The first day we show up to the base, they brought three interpreters, were blown off, two were killed, one was injured. The young man in Jalalabad is saying that, hey, I don't want your flag. This is my national flag. I want to hang it. He got shot in the head. They are in power in Afghanistan. They have no place in any Afghan heart. If you collect 100 Afghanis from different tribes, from different languages, from different cultures in Afghanistan, you will see one will say that, yeah, I'm on the part of Taliban. 99% will say we don't want them. So I believe a conversation needs to be had here about what's really going on in Afghanistan. And I'm here with Mr. A, who still has family back in country. And uh, Mr. A here was a Afghanistan interpreter serving the United States of America, serving side by side with our American troops over there. And ironically, as I relocated here to Dallas, Texas, I was uh, uh, hired to service to hang our TVs. And uh, the, the weirdest thing is that uh, Mr. A here recognized my face or a likeness of me. And he started asking me a question. I just want to fully disclose. I was never in Afghanistan. I was in the Middle East, but not that part of the, uh, the, the, part of the Middle East. I had two combat deployments, and uh, I know it's like to have interpreters side by side uh, by you. Uh, but I want to cut to the chase of what's going on because there's so much confusion. Uh, real quick, Mr. A, what should people be aware of when watching the regular mainstream media? What's your opinion of the mainstream media? Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes, uh, I came across. Glad I'm here. Thank you for sharing the pain with us. Uh, it touches my heart where everybody rush into my phone and they over the social media and, and sharing the pain and the, what's what I'm going through and what my family is going through, what the whole nation, that, that great nation is going through. Mm. It takes it to me and says, if there's anything that they can help. Yeah. Uh, I was sharing the all the messages with my, with my wife at home and you know that that much love and respect really touches your heart and you're part of it. I appreciate you reaching out and uh, that uh, even you don't do anything to me, but still that means to me millions. Sure. sure. We as uh, as humans, we need to care about each other more than anything. Unfortunately, chaos is happening in Afghanistan. Yeah. I would like to uh, touch bases on a few things. Anything I, I'm saying today, it is because I have family back there, I'm connected with my people. I ha I get uh, daily uh, news, like mm -hmm. hourly news, uh, from our people from there because they I reach out, I care about them. I'm the one. What's happening in Afghanistan is not only up uh, sad for me or disturb me, my family, the whole nation is in a big collapse and chaos. What's exactly happening in Afghanistan? What they are showing in the media, I will say. Uh, 
these uh, Taliban that uh, that they're there in Afghanistan, when they come to camera, they're trying to show themselves that there's now change, they're friendly, but their reality is not that. Uh, the good thing that we have all these social media and we get videos from every single stuff is happening. Just today, I can tell you uh, 20 people got killed. They went behind their houses, they worked for the US troops, somehow they were involved in the Afghan army, especially they're targeting those that they work with US troops. So they took them out, they hanged them, four of them in Kandahar. And uh, there was Nimri's- Just videos, today. Just today. Uh, there was a demonstration from people uh, went to streets and raising Afghanistan three color flag, which I'm gonna be proud of that. And, um, and they were there to raise their voice that I do not want your flag. So they shoot at people. The young man in Jalalabad that was having the flag and saying that, hey, I don't want your flag. This is my national flag. I wanna hang it. Mm -hmm. He got shot in the head. There's pictures, videos that was caught. Another video was made in Kabul where someone was working with the, with the government and they took him out of his house, very badly kicking him. And uh, that's what the reality of Taliban are. Uh, one thing I would like to make it clear to the whole world, to the, to everyone hearing my wise, if somebody is still kind of in a, in mind that Taliban are changed, they probably be able to help the Afghan people. That's not what Taliban are made for. Taliban were made for violence, killing, torturing. They're not less than Daesh. To me. They are not changed. They are even violence. And just on the media to kind of, uh, uh, they are showing that they are changed, is to get confirmation from other countries to recognize them. That's just for me on the camera. What's happening behind the camera, I see it, I feel it because I was barely 12 years old where they were back in, before 2001. They were in power. I remember those days. I was pretty uh, 12, 13 years old. Is pretty, yeah, yeah. pretty, yeah. Sure. Uh, that's what what happening in, in Afghanistan. What did America do for you when you were 12 years old and finally came in 2006? So if people can understand, because people think here we're in America, so many people have zero clue. We've been there for 20 years, but so many people have zero clue what it's like to be over there. How old were you uh, in 2006 and what did the American, what did American soldiers do for you? So I was uh, around 10 years old when uh, 2001 American troops came into Afghanistan, which was a great thing uh, to me if, if, if it was not because of the American troops service in there, I wouldn't be able to talk English today. So the schools got open, there was no offices, no schools, nothing. When the Americans came in, they defeated the Taliban and within three days, which was very good. People, We were not even in our town. We were living in a dis different part of Afghanistan because where my home is, it's, I don't want to specify the location, but it was in the war line between the Masoods and Northern part and the central government and against Taliban. So we were not in our place as soon as 2001 ha incident happened where the Americans came to Afghanistan. So at 2002, that's where I went to school. Uh, there was no school. There was no roof. There was, we were just sitting in the dirt. But still, people were very happy at that time. And uh, I went to school uh, up to 11th grade. And then I saw the opportunity to to work as a linguist or interpreter with US troops. Uh, my dad was working uh, for one of the NGOs, uh, for one of the uh, companies that was subcontracted with US troops. Mm -hmm. So he's, he heard about the opportunity. I went over there. The good thing I was speaking Pashto, which is the most spoken language in Afghanistan, and Farsi and English. 
And the minute they just interview me, they say, you're good to go. We hired you. The next day, a C-130 US uh, plane show up. I jump in. I went to north side of Afghanistan in Helmand province. Uh, we were 123 uh, interpreters that was uh, wow. brand new hired. Uh, out of that number, only six people stayed in a job because their job was so risky. The, the first day we show up to the base, they brought three interpreters, were blown off, two were killed, one was injured. When the other interpreter saw that everybody left because I needed a job at the time uh, so bad because my I'm from a big family, my family was going all through all the financial problems. So I keep up the job, put the hard work in. Put your life at risk. And a really high risk. I was uh, at 2010 when I was uh, deployed in a Hellman alongside with US Marines with zero training, a younger 21 years old. So it was a little bit hard, challenging for me, but I find my way, I learn it. I, I got used to it. So I was an interpreter over there. Uh, so at 29 July, 2010, I remember like this day, uh, I was in a, uh, in a vehicle with say, uh, five more Marines. We, we went to supply our other team on the way back, our vehicle hit by an ID. Mm. Um, we lost a great Marine, a great friend. He was a great friend as well to me in a job. So, I was uh, deeply injured and the helicopter came in, rescued us and took us to the hospitals. And then I went on a vacation home. Then I start working with US Air Force. I was just a interpreter, teaching them in a class, taking them in a plane. Wow. This is the story. You know, it, it, uh, it's very unsettling to me because, you know, people think there's 300,000 Afghani army soldiers out there. The, 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 the U.S. military trained 300,000 troops. And it seemed to be that the Afghani army didn't want to fight. They said they just pretty much laid down. What, what was the truth? I mean, we're hearing all that, but what do you hear? Because you have family, you have friends. That are so your concerned. question is exactly what I think that why these army did not defend and fight and stayed until the last minute? Correct. So... I'm not working for anyone. I'm just a local. That's what my opinion is, working with directly with troops. So first thing, it's very sad for not only me, for all Afghans, that how fast these uh, Taliban, uh, the country got in the hands of Taliban. I'm not a political person. I don't know what's the political reason behind this. Uh, having a great nation, a great army, uh, my brother, he's, he's a captain in army, Afghanistan army. I was uh, in contact with him until the last minute where his commander ordered him to hand the guns and weapons to the hands of Taliban. Mm. He did not want to do that. He was barely crying. He said, I'm not. We work hard to have a great nation like this. Why would we do that? Well, the situation got really worse and he left the job. And he did not even got face to face to Taliban because the Taliban were looking for him and says that if you get him, because he was uh, commanding 120 other soldiers. So this is the story of uh, Afghan military that in the military level, there was energy, there was everything. What happened, it was more political. What I'm hearing lately from your sources. Uh, my yeah. sources were uh, that the country was handed over politically to the hands of Taliban. As a, our president uh, uh, show up on a video today and, and clear those thing, uh, those uh, those comments that he runs away, but uh, he said that uh, the the presidential palace was already surrounded by Taliban. There was two thousand of them. There he got a message that you will be you will be killed, leave the country. As soon as he left, then they slowly came into the country and to the capital. I mean, they were already in the country. Got it. So they're already there. Yeah, so it's, it's very sad yeah. because we work really hard. Not only Afghans, we lost a thousand, thousand American troops live and Afghan, Afghan lives to, to, to build that country. And now we lost it. That turned into the hash. How, how do you feel when you see that video of the C-17 taking off on the airstrip 
and your fellow countrymen are running with the airplane and they're hanging on for dear life and they're hanging on even until it goes on the air and you see them just drop from there. What, what goes through your mind? What goes through uh, when you see that? Oh, it, it's very sad. It's sad for not only me, for everyone. Uh, when as human, when you want to choose between worse and bad, you always want to choose bad. So that Afghan people, and especially those who work with U.S. troops, are in the situation to choose between worse and bad. The same wow. airport that you were deployed in, the same airport that I was there for five years, that's not a big space. And this side of the palace, mm -hmm. the main runway is American troops, and on that other side is Taliban. So now those that work with U.S. troops, the worst is on that side, the bad is in this side because the American troops doesn't know them. They're running, rushing into the planes. So everybody's uh, choosing the bad. So what's happening with that uh, plane, that, uh, why people were rushing? Everybody want to get out of that place. Not only those they work with the militaries, those the locals, they cannot see, they cannot live under their commands. Yeah, because what happens then if then they're captured by the Taliban? That's the, the that's, that's the worst. So that's the worst because they will make videos and they will left those videos and killing them in front of their family eyes. And uh, I mean, to me, if I'm in that situation, I will do everything. Whatever comes to me, I will not hand myself to the hands of those of Taliban. Day. Because on the camera, they're not saying anything. I mean, they're still saying it. And one of the reporters asked the Taliban spokesman that you guys killed thousands, thousands of Afghans, women in the hospitals, kids on, going to school, you blow them off to pieces where they, their family couldn't find their bodies. Would you say sorry? He said, very shamefully said, like, we did not kill anyone and we are not going to say sorry even. Do you believe him? I don't believe him. Not at all. When, when, um, when you see, you know, uh, people over there, you know, they're, they're putting a predicament, they're putting a situation. What don't Americans get? You know, when, when we're living here in, you know, America and there's so much infighting, when you see America fight, you know, so many issues we have in America and you come over here from Afghanistan and you're building a business here, you've you got your own thing. What don't you see American get? Like, what do you see? Like, yo, you don't even understand the freedoms that you have that I fought here to get and I'm enjoying here and you're fighting over that? Yes, of course. I always say this when I'm talking with uh, my fellow American uh, brothers and sisters here in America. You know, I'm going, I'm really connected with people here too. Uh, one thing, my message to all American citizens is that appreciate what you have. If you really want to know what this peace that we have in here, the opportunities we have, Come talk to me, and I, my message is to everyone is that appreciate what you have. Don't fight over things that's useless. What I every time I see people here having little issue over stuff, you don't want to go through what Afghan people are going through. Respect your your country and proud of your military forces. They put their life in a really high risk to give a life that we have today. If that was not because of their hard work, we wouldn't be having a peaceful life here. Support your armies, support your military forces, always, everywhere. Be united. I feel the pain, how hard it is to live a life in a country where there is fight and there's violence, they're torturing. And that's, that's my message to everyone. What can we do as America, as also veterans? And a lot of veterans right now are very ticked off what's going on because they, you know, over there for 20 years and to see the country just be taken over in three days, four days. And a lot of veterans are upset. Obviously you're upset. What can we do? What can, how can we rise up? How can we support what's going on over there in terms of helping Afghanis get out of there and get out of a bad situation because I don't think you believe when the Taliban says oh we're going to honor women we're going to take we're gonna, they're not going to be you know uh, you know they're not going to be treated badly you don't believe that for a second do you I do not believe that 
the reason behind this, uh, as I said earlier, and we, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, carry this message to uh, everyone that uh, all the American forces that work back in Afghanistan, I'm sure you all had interpreters, you had some other Afghan counterparts that works for you, help them. Help them. We should help them earlier, but if you still uh, receiving a message from someone that you recognize that worked for you, please help him. That's, that's a very bad situation in Afghanistan. If Taliban are saying that they're honoring and they're forgiving, that's not true. They're looking specifically for three categories people. That's what I'm hearing. First, Amer those they work with Americans. It doesn't matter. Truck driver, man working up in a defect or in, where we were eating and interpreters, anyone. They're looking number one for them. It's a victory for them. When they kill them, it's a victory. They're, they're, they're proud of that. Second thing, the military forces that were in the Air Force. My, the people that I work with, they're all hiding right now. So if you are someone that you had an Afghan counterpart that worked for you and you'd recognize him, please help him. Uh, this is the time to help him before you see his dead bodies videos on a on a hmm. on a social media, yeah. Well, so when you say, is what specific things can we help? Is it financial support? Is it uh, you know just reaching out? And, and what, uh, what what's any specifics there? Uh, so specifically, if I say if you can get them out, uh, that's the first great thing that you can do. And uh, one message that I want to carry on to local citizens here in America, any any state. If you see an Afghan refugee that's your neighbor uh, going there, talking to them and giving them hope for living here, it means a lot. Like him reach out to me, what he can help me, that that means a lot to me. Sure, gotcha. That's all we need gotcha. to do. These service, uh, Afghan local service people that ser did service in, uh, with U.S. Army, Marines, and Air Force, they did not choose to have a worse life. Now they're, they lost their family, and now they lost the whole country. I haven't seen my family for seven years. I'm living here. This is my country. This is my people. And uh, I did everything to help my own nation and also help the troops that they were there. I deserve to be respected. If you see someone, don't judge them based on that you're an immigrant and your country is bad, you are bad. Every country has good and bad. And those that they work with American forces and interpreters, they are the most educated people. They are helpful. They're helping the economy. They're helping uh, the other American citizen lives in here, they're not bad. Every person that's coming here, it took years for them to get visa, to come sh get shelter. So we are here getting shelter. We are here uh, to be saved. So if you see in, uh, someone, please help them. And you're making a name, you're making your own way out here. It's not like you're depending on government support. You you've got a business. Yes. Of which I hired you to, and I'm going to continue to hire you because we're opening up office space. I need you to hang Thank out more TVs. And Thank you. Uh, one thing about uh, those that they are already here, for, those Afghans that they are here, uh, most of them are not dependent on a government help. Myself, I only use food stamp. They call it that you can buy foods for six months. My mentality was always that I can do better as I'm doing right now. I'm helping my own family. I'm helping my family back there. Most of those, uh, they work with American troops. They have their own companies now. They're helping themselves. They're helping the economy in this country. They're paying taxes. I can tell you hundreds that I know, they have their own businesses. They're in trucking business, gas station business, service basin mm -hmm. like companies like mine. Yeah. Uh, so 
the, the, the good thing that when they come in here, they already know the language. They already know a little bit about the American culture because they work with directly six years, seven years, four years with American troops. We kind of, that's how I was. When I came at 2015, I was already on the road working. After 15 days, when I got my first documents to be authorized to work here, I started a job. So... Help. Amen. That being said, guys, uh, Mr. A, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, not only are we praying for you, but we're finding ways. I told you, I want to be your first phone call. If Thank there's any so financial support or assistance I can do to help get people out of country and over here or just out of that situation, I want to be your first phone call. And, and now for those of you watching, I hope that you can be a, uh, a supporter of what's going on right now in terms of people getting out of there. The good people of Afghanistan, you help them out. And uh, Mr. A here, you worked alongside the military forces. So my last message to everyone that hearing my voice is, uh, in general, Afghan people are appreciating all American hard work. Even the country is getting in the hands of Taliban. We appreciate every single serviceman that's helped that country. In general, uh, our Afghan people, they wish they had what the the good peaceful government but unfortunately at handover for different reasons that it that everybody is kind of in, in a big confusion how fast this country army got in the hands of these mm -hmm. devils uh just uh we appreciate every single serviceman that came to afghanistan and make our people live better we are much better than before 2001 we at least have offices, we have a, uh, they did a lot of stuff. We appreciate them and stuff happening in Afghanistan, it's not in the favor of us and not, neither of those they serve in, Af in Afghanistan. Do you think it's gonna be reversed now that Taliban is in, in power? I have no hope. I have zero hope uh, because uh, for Taliban being in Afghanistan, I can tell you clearly uh, that Afghanistan will be a good haven for terrorists. And that's what Taliban are made for. That's what Taliban's are. They're not going to behave good. Uh, if as an Afghan, an American citizen, I will always protect myself and I wouldn't trust them. That's my message. That's my personal opinion. People can have any kind of opinion. I have zero hope for Taliban that they will be able to... Uh, have a stable government in Afghanistan. They're proving it. They were in power in Afghanistan. They are in power in Afghanistan. They have no place in any Afghan heart. If you collect 100 Afghanis from different tribes, from different languages, from different cultures in Afghanistan, you will see one will say that, yeah, I'm on the part of Taliban. 99% will say we don't want them. Wow. So. Taliban are forced to Afghan lives. Taliban regime is forced to Afghan lives, and it's not going to last that long, the way I see it. Well, thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, if you guys are watching this again, I want to reiterate, do what you can to, if you want to pray and actually put that prayer to action, do your part here as American citizens to value what you have here in America, because uh, many different places, just like Afghanistan, it's so much more worse. And do what you can. If you are uh, in proximity or somebody from Afghanistan worked side by side with the American forces, do your part to help out during this, during these tough times. So with that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, and uh, pray for Afghanistan. So God bless Afghanistan and God bless America. God bless Afghanistan. God bless America. Thank you so much for inviting me, sure. boss. Bye-bye. Right.